Hello Somerset family, my name is Andrew Medina and I get to serve as the youth pastor at Somerset Baptist Church and I'm so glad that you're joining us today in our Sunday School lesson. If this is your first time hearing about our, our, Sunday, School, our Sunday School class, I encourage you to follow us on our Instagram at Somerset Youth and you can get catch up on, go to our link below and it will send you to our YouTube channel where it has all our Sunday School lessons for you to have as great resources and for your study. So we are, are continuing on in our series called The Walk and what we're doing is we're taking a deep study on the fruit of the Spirit which we find in Galatians chapter 5 in verses 22 and 23 and what we're doing is we're taking each fruit and we're understanding each one to get a better understanding that we can use these things to walk with God, to fully trust Him, to fully pursue Him, especially during these hard times. You know, how can we walk with God during these hard times? Well, it's by walking by His Spirit. In Galatians 5, 16, that's what it says. So we are in week four of our series and last week we talked about joy and if you have missed out on any of our series I encourage you to go back follow us on our Instagram go to our YouTube channel and we will, you will have all the info you need about our series so as I said before we are week four of our series today and and we are going to be talking about peace today and before we talk about peace let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer Father God, I pray, Lord, as we dig deep into your word, I pray today that your word will be glorified and that your word will be communicated and that Jesus Christ will be highly exalted and that the students and those watching this video will be beautifully blessed. And it's in your name, King Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, for those who do not know, I am a huge fan of the series Lord of the Rings. And it comes from The Hobbit all the way to Return of the King. And I'm just a huge fan of just the saga of Lord of the Rings. You know, one of the things I like about Lord of the Rings is always interesting about the towers that I see and the castles that I also get to see. And I just, for fun, I just wanted to look at some castles and to see how its structure was, how the history, the history around the castles, castles and designs. Even even the Great Wall of China is another a great great look uh, look about when it comes to uh, design, and it's just awesome to see that everything about castles and designs of castles or even walls is always complete. They're always just designed so well. But going back to Lord of the Rings, I, I, if you remember in the in the movie The Two Towers, we talked about that it, it, it goes about the people of Rohan going to this to the castle of Helm's Deep and, and Helm's Deep was a place of shelter it was a place for the for the men for the widow for the uh, women and children to be safe as the men would fight against the evil armies of Sauron and Saruman and I'm, I'm not gonna go nerd on you guys but particularly in in Helm's Deep the evil counselor that was beside the king in that movie talks about a weakness in the castle in the tower of Helm's Deep and we see it in the in, as a, as a as a personal view of what that was and so i truly believe that cast that castle wasn't really designed as it should be because it had a weakness you know today we're we'll talking about peace which is the third fruit of the spirit now you may be thinking, Andrew, what does stones, castles, and buildings have to do with peace? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we're, today we're going to be theologians today, and we're going to look at the Hebrew and Greek word of peace. Let's start with the Old Testament Hebrew word of peace. In Hebrew, the, uh, uh, it would be shalom, and that would mean peace. And then also in Greek, which we'll talk about later on, it is erein, which also means peace. And what peace is... Is means complete, means whole. So we're going to look at some several passages of scripture to get an idea of shalom and arene. We're going to start with the Hebrew shalom. We find this in Joshua chapter eight when he's building the uh, it was building a, a altar for the Lord for a sacrifice. We see this in Joshua eight thirty one. Just as Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded the Israelites, he built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar 
of uncut stones on which no iron tool had been used. Then they offered burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings on it. So you see in the text, an altar of uncut stone. That means it wasn't meant to be damaged. It was meant, it, was, it had to be complete, which was we get shalom from. Complete as a whole. So you see it was a complete stone wall. It was a state of completeness. We also find this in the book of Job, chapter 5, 24. It says, You will know that your tent is secure and nothing will be missing when you inspect your home. Right there we get secure. We complete. It's, it is bound together. It is whole. It can also refer to a person's well-being, which, which we find in Proverbs, where Proverbs says, that we are to bring peace to those that are hurting, you know. And here's the core idea when it comes to peace. That so going back to stones and castle designs and etc. You know, life is complicated, full of moving parts and relationships and situations. And when any of these is out of alignment or missing, your shalom breaks down. Breaks down life. Is that and it tells you that life is no longer whole, it needs to be restored. You know, that's the basic meaning of shalom when you use it as a verb. To bring shalom literally means to make complete or restore. So going back to uh, going back to shalom, right? The, 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 uh, it, was to be un, it was supposed to be uncut. It was supposed to be complete, whole. But when life gets in the way and things start to arise, we end up getting damaged. We end up getting hurt. We end up losing completion or we're no longer whole and we need to be restored. And it literally means shalom is to make completion or to restore. In, in 1 Kings chapter 9, we see talk about King Solomon when he built when he built uh, an altar for the Lord. He also built, he's the one that also built a tabernacle. It says in 1 Kings 9, 25, three times a year, Solomon used to offer up burnt offerings and peace offerings, shalom offerings on the altar that he built to the Lord, making offerings with it before the Lord. So he finished the house, right? Peace offerings, shalom, complete wholeness. And when it came to doing wrong in Exodus 22, 4, it says that if it was stolen, whether ox, donkey, or sheep is actually found alive in his possession, he must repay double, right? It has to be a complete payment. You can't go halfies on it. You can't just do 20% of the payment. It has to be a complete payment. Proverbs 16, 7, when it came to making peace with others, it says when a, person, when a person's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace, right? Complete shalom with him. So our main text today, we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 9. So if you join me there in Isaiah chapter 9, beginning in verse 5. So in this passage, we may be familiar with this passage because Isaiah the prophet is talking about the coming Messiah. And as when, while he was talking about the upcoming Messiah, King Jesus, it was during a time where there was no shalom. There was no peace. There was no calmness. There was so much chaos, so much violence. And this is where we get our text today in chapter 9, verse 5 of Isaiah. And so it says, For every trampling boot of battle and the bloodied garments of war will be burnt as fuel for the fire. Verse 6 is our main text. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. So we read that He is the one, Jesus is the one that 
is gonna make everything complete. He is the one that gives us peace. Just like joy last week, we talked about how joy, Jesus is a source of joy, but also we find peace in God. So for every trampling boot of battle, and, the, uh, and, so, we t- and so there was violence and chaos, and then Isaiah prophesies the coming king, King Jesus, who will bring peace. And in verse 7, it continues on and says, The dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will never end. That means His peace will never end. That Jesus came to bring peace. This is why Jesus' birth in the New Testament was announced as the arrival of, in the Greek now, Ereine, which means peace, peace. And then we read that when the angels are glorifying God, it says, peace on earth. Peace had came down for us. That Jesus came to offer us His peace to others. He came to bring back into completion to make us whole again, right? So we were broken. We were not shalom or arena. And, we're, and, and we're God. And Jesus comes in and He's the one that brings everything together. And He's the one that provides us peace. Jesus Himself in John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. And this is my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. He's saying that, he's saying, I'm giving you myself. I'm giving you my peace. I'm the one that's going to make you whole. I'm the one that's going to make you complete. If you go back to the Apostle Paul, in Romans 5, he says, Therefore, right? Therefore, since we have been justified, just a fancy word to be just, justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, right? It's through Jesus Christ that we have peace. You see, it's that Jesus made peace between messed up humans, right? Us and God when He died and rose from the dead. The idea is that He restored the wholeness, the broken relationship between humans and their Creator. This is why the Apostle Paul, in Ephesians 2, verses 14 and 15, he says, For He, the Lord, King Jesus, He is our peace. Paul is proclaiming that He is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. In his flesh he made no effect the law consisting of commands and express regulations, so that he might create in himself one new man from the two, resulting in what? Peace. Right? He is the whole, complete human that I made to be, but failed to be. Right? Jesus is the one that restores everything together, right? He is the one that is the Prince of Peace. He's the one that is peace. Now, He gives me His life, right? Jesus' death, His death on the cross, gives us His life as a gift. And this means that Jesus' followers, that's us, as the followers of Jesus, we are now called to create peace. That, and, and, and sometimes you'll be like, oh, how can I bring peace to a person that doesn't deserve it? Well, how about you look in the mirror once in a while? Don't you think you deserve peace? God Himself, if He gives you His Son and He gives you His peace, what makes you, th- makes you think that they, all, they don't deserve peace? They do. If we're given peace, so if God, and God gives peace to everybody, We also are called and destined to give peace to others, to make completion and whole. Why? Because we're bound in Jesus. So Paul instructs the local churches to keep up their unity through the bond of peace, right? Which requires what? Humility, patience, and bearing with others in love, right? And next week, we're going to be talking about patience and And you see right here this connection that in Jesus, when we truly walk with Him, 
He gives us everything we need. His love, His joy, and peace. His peace. So He tells us as the church that we are to show love. We are to show kindness. But we also need to be humble in that. So becoming people of peace means this, participating in the life of Jesus, which is, which is why Paul says in Colossians 1, 19 and 20, he says, he says in Colossians 1, verses 19 and 20, he says, it says, For God was pleased to have all His fullness dwell in Him, and through Him to reconcile everything to Himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven. By what? By making peace. So peace, guys, takes a lot of work, but it's not just the absence of conflict, right? True peace, if you want true peace, it requires us taking what is broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it's in our lives, our relationships, or in our world. Guys, we live in a world it is crying for peace. We read in Isaiah where, where it was violent and chaotic, that people were crying and in need of peace. Someone to bring people together, someone to bring order, someone to bring peace. Shalom, Erene. And that is Jesus. Jesus gives us His peace. So when we walk with Him, we get a peace of understanding that surpasses understanding. Knowing that He is in control of everything. And so when it came to joy last week, when we realized that Jesus is in control of everything, not only does He give us joy, but He gives us His peace knowing that he has the world in his hand. So when you feel that this pandemic is still too long and I wish things would go back to normal, just remember that God gives us his peace knowing that though this time may be hard and, may, and, for the, and, for walk, and walking with Jesus can be challenging, but remember that peace, we get completion in Christ. Let's pray together. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you are the one that gives us your peace, that we are complete in you. So, Father, we just thank you for everything you do for us, and we just thank you for your grace. So, Lord, bless us. Bless those uh, who are here watching this video, and I pray that, 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 that your word will be proclaimed and that lives will be changed. And it's your name, King Jesus, that we pray to, who is our source of peace, who makes us complete. And it's in your name, complete name, that we pray. Amen and amen.